Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.blogspot.com to another blog and another podcast. Today we're in Luke chapter 20, verses 41 through 44, which reads, And he said to them, How can they say that the Christ is the son of David? Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore David calls him Lord. How is he then his son? That's Luke chapter 20, verses 41 through 44. It is Wednesday of the Lord Jesus' final week on the earth. We return to the temple where he has been teaching all day, just two days before his crucifixion. The Jewish religious leaders continue to challenge him with their insincere questions. They had no desire to follow God. They were more interested in power, influence, and prestige. And I might add the power, influence, and prestige of this world. In order to garner more power, influence, and prestige, they wore special garments expected to be addressed with special titles and greetings and looked for special seats at public gatherings. It, for them, was about this world. After having answered a question from the Sadducees, the Lord Jesus asked the religious leaders one final question. But before he asks his question, he quotes Psalm 110 in verse 1, which reads, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Then he asks, How can they say that the Christ is the son of David? According to 2 Samuel 7 verses 13 and 14 and Isaiah 11 in verse 1 and Jeremiah 23 in verse 5, God had ordained that the Messiah should come from the family of David and be born in David's city, Bethlehem. You see that in Micah 5, 2. The term son of David was the most common term for the Messiah of all of the terms in Judaism. The Jews, to whom the Lord just spoke, believed their Messiah would be a human who would come into the world, become the ruler of Israel, reestablish the kingdom of God and rule the world of nations from Jerusalem. They believed the Messiah would be the best of men, the noblest of men, the most gifted and blessed of men, and a son of David. But they did not believe the Messiah would be God. They saw him only as a man from God. The Lord Jesus knew some of the religious leaders present that day in the temple were not far from the kingdom of God. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea were in that category, and they subsequently became followers of Christ. This explains why he is still down to the very last conversation inviting sinners who are headed to hell to receive his free gift of salvation. According to Matthew 1 and Luke 3, the Lord Jesus came through the genealogy of David. Both his parents were from the Davidic line. He therefore is the son of David. If he were not of a son of David, it would have been used to discredit him because the scribes and the religious leaders were very careful with genealogical records. Again, in verse 41, we read, And he said to them, How can they say that the Christ is the son of David? The only way the Messiah could be David's son and David's Lord was he had to be the eternal God who came as the God-man. This was too much for the Jewish religious leaders, though. 
This made them change their interpretation of Psalm 110, saying it refers to Abraham, not the Messiah. They do the same with Isaiah 53, with the suffering Messiah. Instead of interpreting Isaiah 53, speaking of Messiah, they say it refers to Israel. My question is, why is the first person masculine pronoun used in Isaiah 53 for the suffering servant? He, 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 over and over. Why isn't a plural pronoun used if it speaks of Israel? In verse 44 of our text, we read, Therefore David calls him Lord. How is he then his son? The discussion with the Sadducees was over. Luke says they had nothing left to say. So the Lord Jesus asked his final question. And they couldn't answer. They were doubly silenced. Where do we go if we reject the Lord Jesus Christ? We can't just think he's a good person and the Bible is a wonderful book. The Bible makes clear the Lord Jesus is God. He is David's son and David's Lord. If we believe that, we affirm Scripture. If we do not believe that, we deny Scripture. The Jewish religious leaders rejected their own Messiah and had him crucified. They led the nation into ruin because they would not admit their sins and confess Jesus as the son of David. These men, men were experts in the law, yet they did not apply its truths to their own lives. Their religion was a matter of external observation, not internal transformation. Yet the miracles and the wisdom of the Lord Jesus speaks for themselves. But the remaining question is, do you believe him to be God? If he is not God, we have no Savior. But if he is God, and he is, what a Savior. What a Savior. My friends, I trust this plod, 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 podcast and this blog are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, don't hesitate to shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.